Hey guys, this is Gary with Runes of Life, and I want to bring you a review of a book I ran across called The Solo Game Master's Guide, uh, put out by Modifius. It's by Geek Gamers. They have a YouTube channel that covers a lot of uh, uh, material as far as how to run solo RPGs. And uh, this is interesting to me because uh, I'm in the situation where it can be very difficult to get an RPG group as far as scheduling and uh, find times when everybody can get together. And just being able to have uh, the idea of to run a, an RPG for myself and have that same experience, uh, I found that interesting. So let's kind of dive into this. I'm not going to do a complete flip through because I don't want to reveal all of the information that's in here, but I do want to give you an idea of what it is if you're buying this and kind of give you my thoughts on it. So you see the cover. It's I, I like the artwork overall. It's um seems a I like the shadowing and the colors. The font on this and uh, some of the graphic design is not quite my favorite, but um, overall it's you know pretty good um, as far as the artwork itself. So um, going to through the actual book, I'm gonna just scroll down and kind of see some of the artwork here. Um, Let's look at the table of contents. So we have part one, uh, the book's divided into three parts. Part one is campaign level, the big picture that tells you what is solo RPG in any way. Uh, think like a solo GM and easy ways to be your own GM. You have part two, session level, rules and how to use them. How to start your solo RPG session with no rule set. Step by step, setting up a solo session with a rule set. How to read uh, uh, really big rule sets and let's talk D&D. &D. So uh, then you get into part three which is tools of the trades, um, oracles, dice, random tables, developing your story and avoiding the yes no dead end, uh, what's a narrative trajectory and why do I need one, and the epilogue what happens next and you have an appendices filled with lots of information and that's where a big split, we have like three parts up here but really the split happens to be between where the epilogue is and the appendices. Um, let me just say right now, I really like the appendices on this because it takes all the information and charts here and just kind of puts it all together. Um, you'll notice that it's a pretty short book, right? Um, it goes up to, uh, let's see, one. it says 184 of, on my uh, PDF count. Um, you see that About Geek Gamers towards the end is page 169. There's also quite a few blank pages, uh, dividing sections. So. It's short, and that's going to be one of the things that's uh, going to have a question of value for me. Um, but we'll get into that as it goes on. So you kind of have the general stuff, you know, the introduction, uh, defining what they mean by solo RPGs. It's just like when you get an RPG book. What's an RPG? What's a game master? Well, this is defining terms as far as solo RPG, uh, and it talks about easy ways to be your own GM. That's kind of where it uh, gets into some of the meat of it, and. Um, this is where it talks about the different resources you can use generative resources suggestive resources restrictive resources and a rubric and she talks about these different resources that can help you uh, create a story for yourself when you are the only person playing when you are both player and GM and I really like this section it gave some great ideas on uh, how to generate ideas so that you don't get stuck because uh, one of the things she mentions in here is it's easy to kind of get into a loop with solo RPGs you might have a table that tells you yes or no but if you were counting on that table to say yes to advance the story and you end up with a no uh, you're gonna get stuck so she talks a lot about that how not to get stuck and also uh, other resources and she uses things in an interesting way generative resources um, one of the examples she uses in this section is uh, sometimes when she's playing a game she'll roll three d10s and those are all page numbers in a book so she rolls a five a three and a zero and it gives her page 530 of a book and she's picked out these books to be something that's sort of related to the RPGs so you're, you're not just gonna pick a random book though I guess you could uh, but she you know would use um, she uses a lot of older books it seems like but that might just be because uh, it's easy to put those in here without having copyright right you can't put the newest stuff in here but um, she basically rolls up a page and she reads until it gives her an idea of what to wh what direction to take her story in and she tries to you know if she's doing fantasy she gears the book towards something that is uh, fantasy if she's doing sci-fi something that's sci-fi doesn't have to be 
but uh, it seems like she tries to do that. And I like that. I never thought of, you know, you, you open a book and you just start reading on this random page. And when, you, when a plot point or a piece of imagery uh, clicks with you and gives you an idea on where to take your own story, you just go with it. So uh, that is really interesting. Equally interesting was suggestive resources. Uh, she talks about, uh, you can see some of the artwork here. I think the artwork itself is fine. Like I said, the graphic design, a little bit plain, but the artwork is good. Um, suggestive resources, she might talk about, um, she mentions maps, items, equipment, or treasure cards, uh, minis, tokens. At one point she talked about just pulling cards from terraforming Mars and she's looking at these cards giving her ideas on uh, where does the story go from there. Um, and then she had, let me see what else, there was rubrics, but there's some before that, restrictive resources. Restrictive resources, if I'm remembering right, are just your yes-no tables and um, rolling on those. And that's something you'll see a lot of in the uh, end when you get to the tables. And then you finally have your rubric, which um, she sort of described as uh, your fancy way of saying your rules, what rule set you're using. So she goes through those and kind of even at this point in the book you're getting a good idea of how you can use these things we're only a, you know a few pages in well 44 of 184 according to this and you're already getting ideas of I can see how this could work because I was really doubtful at times on the solo RPG and thing that it could be interesting that I could make a story um, but I like it I, I do I like how she's leading you through there so she goes into rules and how to use them and different ways to start your session. Are you going to start without a rule set? Because um, a lot of times, uh, and this is, you think about a solo RPG, right? It doesn't behave the same way is how she explains it. In a um, RPG that you do with your friends, everybody pretty much starts with character creation, except the GM, right? But everybody's going to start with character creation because you know what the environment is and um, you're going to take that character into the environment and play it. Well, characters, as she kind of puts it, is they don't have much meaning or much emotion behind them if they're not tied into something that's going on in the world. So she starts with uh, in different ways, and she kind of pushes the idea of not starting with character, but maybe coming up with your environment, coming up with uh, other things that are interesting first. And that was also really good advice, and I, I like that. Um, I like that she spends time talking about how to get through, uh, how to set things up, how to start without a character, like in this section. Ten ways to start your session that aren't character creation. And she kind of sets this, uh, leads you into creating this world that your character can um, uh, live in, that your character can react to, and th so that you don't get stuck in your stories. And I thought that was really good, those ideas. Um, then she gives you step by step on setting up and how to read uh, really big rule sets. So you know if you, uh, what can you do um, if you're you have this several hundred page rule set? How do you go about that? Well, you skip over character creation. You start looking for anomalies, things that jump out at you. And she gives you tips there. I'm not going to read them all. And then she has a whole chapter on let's talk D and D because that's the biggest uh, RPG there is. So she felt that it was kind of necessary to talk about how these rules interact with D&D because a lot of people who pick this book up, that's probably what they're playing. Uh, that's probably what they're interested in going into, at least a little bit. So she gives uh, some time to D&D. Uh, the other thing, I think I skipped over it actually. I didn't realize it was in the earlier section. Oh, and this I really like. So I'm going to backtrack a little bit. The 10 mindsets of solo RPGs. Um, and she gives you kind of like things to think about as uh, you're going about this. The things you have to keep in mind to get, keep the game moving, to make this work, to make this fun. Um, so just to uh, give you a few, and you kind of see them here, but one that really jumped out at me, the first one, everything is plain. And she kind of went to this idea of it doesn't matter, you know, if your session is character creation or just reading the book 
or you know maybe researching things that's playing the RPG yes it, as a solo GM yes it may not be that you're going through an adventure going through a story but you need to consider that when you are doing these things creating a character or whatever that is not considered the meat of the story is still playing the RPG you're still interacting with the rule set and getting something out of it and I found that really encouraging because a lot of times uh, you don't get things off the ground that fast you know you have to make a character or you make all these characters and it feels like you're never playing well you actually are you're just playing with the rule set you're playing with the character creation options and that's true for both uh, solo G I mean I think and also when you're with a group um, so just this idea that you can you know don't look at this as the preamble to having fun this is part of the fun I really like that that made me think a lot um, Play emotions, not mechanics, was another thing. So, you know, the idea of um, responding to, uh, if I remember right, let's see. The story hangs on emotion. You know, you're not just focusing on the uh, dice rolls or anything like that. That's another thing she brings up throughout this is that you don't want to rely on the dice rolls. You, sometimes you want to rely on just what happens naturally, which makes sense, right? You, you're not going to have a rules lawyer at your table unless you are the rules lawyer. So you don't need to just look at this and um, you, you know try to get uh, the per, uh, a dice roll for everything to see what happens. Sometimes you just decide that something happens, and that's okay because you are the GM, and that's what a GM does sometimes. Um, Stats are not story, numbers are not narrative, just getting past the idea of uh, having numbers rely on everything. And that's kind of the first uh, half of the book. I know that's the first three parts with the first seven chapters, but um, she also has a section, um, I'm sorry, they had a part three, Tools of the Trade, where she goes through the different tools you'll be using. Once again, good artwork, kind of plain uh, font and uh, graphic design here but good artwork overall uh, chapter 8 was developing your story and avoiding the yes no dead end so like I said uh, she goes through that whole idea of you don't want to get stuck when you need to have a yes but you gotta know when you roll the dice uh, narrative tra trajectory was just the idea of how stories work and her epilogue what happens next um, is uh, the solo RPG is trying to enact a seemingly impossible dance between being a player and acting as a GM at the very same time. In this way, being your own GM is playing both sides of the game. You're creating the structure against which you are also operating within which you're playing. Sounds circular, it is. The challenge for a soloist is to be able to distance yourself from the gameplay at the very same time you're immersing yourself within it. So she kind of just uh, sums this all up and uh, brings it all together at this point. And this is only the first, um, on my PDF it says 103 out of 184. That's a little bit off because that's how PDFs work. The last bit are the appendices, right? And a lot of this is the same information again, but it's easier to reference. Appendice A is the 10 mindsets of the jo uh, solo GM, which as I saw was on the other pages. Appendix B is solo session checklist and guide to starting. So this is just kind of uh, telling you the different types of resources and step by step what you need to do without going back and reading those chapters. Um, next would be my solo RPG wallet revealed so um, she has she does YouTube videos I believe I mentioned that and she has this little wallet that she pulls uh, things out of and this these are the tools that she uses to do solo RPGs um, and it gives the tables in there as well so uh, if you want to have because a lot of people are asking her questions about that um, so beyond that there's character attitudes it's another table to roll on actually I think maybe a series of ta oh no just one table tables of connection and disconnection quick tables for starting with no rule set mechanical adjustments of stats um, literary random tables this was interesting like I said she would sometimes take stories and she would roll the dice and read the story till she got something that uh, gave her an idea to move her RPG along and this is a d66 table so you take two d6s one represents the tens one represents the ones or the units and you get a uh, uh, a uh, sort of where you go on this chart right so if i get 
I guess maybe tens and units might not have been. It's the first number or the second number. So it's like one one, one two, one three, one four, one five, one six, two one, two two, two three, and on and on and on. But you roll, and then you'll read one of these entries, and you know if you're stuck, like okay, uh, my character just uh, went and to broke into a manor. Um, because there's something suspicious going on. I wrote a 2-4, so let's see. Membrane, and these are all from old uh, stories. Virginia Woolf, this one. Membrane after membrane was torn. It blazed a soft yellow, a lambent light, under a film of velvet. It filled the caverns behind the eyes with light. All that inner darkness became a hall, leaf-smelling, earth-smelling of yellow light. And the tree was beyond the flower, the grass a flower, and the tree was entire. At this point, I haven't read the whole thing, but I see this theme of light. And, um, and you know, I said you break into a manor, you know, to check something out. Maybe you see a light that's just glowing and pulsating in another room. And it's drawing you towards it. Something weird's going on with that. And I would incorporate that into uh, your story. So that's your literary random table. Recommended rule sets for soloists. So uh, what are good, easy rule sets to get started with? Good, easy RPGs to get started with if you want to get into solo uh, gaming. Uh, then we have essential random tables. This is a great section with the, just a ton of random tables for you to roll on. Uh, just compiled. So uh, that's a great uh, appendix there. Annotated inspirational and educational reading. These are other books that she thinks would help you if you read them to be a solo uh, GM. And then finally, this last section. So far, I've, I've liked everything. I like the appendix, uh, appendices, rather. I've liked how everything's been uh, compiled. This last section, um, it feels really out of place. It just feels like padding the book a little bit, unfortunately. It takes on sort of a more academic tone. And the idea is, in another part of the book, she talked about dungeons and why dungeons are important, and how they kind of help limit things. You know, you go into a dungeon, and there's certain expectations. <coughs> and kind of the importance of dungeons to RPGs. And there is a whole essay on what dungeons mean to RPGs and why they're important. This is cool and all. But I really don't think that it fits the spirit of the rest of the book, or it really wasn't necessary. It's about, I don't know, 12-ish pages that just seem like, eh, you know, that's cool, but that's not really what I'm looking for. <coughs> and I wouldn't really bring that up too much. The problem with it is that, um, <coughs> something in my throat, excuse me. <coughs> excuse me. The problem with that is that, this is such a short book uh, to be like the last 10 or 12 pages here, you know, when you've only got, I mean, this is 184, like I said, on my PDF. They actually, it's off a little bit. Like my PDF right now says 170. It's actually 165. But to have the last 12 pages or so be things, plus all the other blanks be things that are just like, eh. For something to be this short... Uh, you really need to kind of hit it really hard. Everything needs to be a hit in this book. Um, this was not. Uh, so kind of take that in mind as you're considering whether this is worth the purchase. Um, as far as uh, any other pros, something else I really liked about this is a lot of this information, I'm looking at that, I'm like, man, I could probably write a story you, uh, with this. Uh, some of this guidance, some of this um, advice. I could write a short story, even write a novel in a way. And I know that's not the intention of this, but I really like that, that, that this is sort of a way to get your creative juices flowing as a writer as well. Um, my main mark against this is, like I said, the uh, quantity uh, per the price. Um, I feel like it's a little bit brief. I mean, even with a D&D &D book or something, it's usually double columned, a lot smaller writing and all that. So I think it was $32 direct from Odiphius plus another, uh, for me, like eight or so dollars shipping. Uh, so that really didn't quite, um, uh, you get the free PDF, but it does seem a little bit scant on content. Uh, the counterpoint to that is that the the content that is here aside from this last section that i didn't like about dungeons is very good if you are interested in being a solo gm 
this is good information and I think it would be a good way to start you on that path if you're in the same position as me. Um, so I would definitely, you really just have to look at your needs, right? Will this fit your needs? Uh, are you even interested in solo GMing? I don't know that this book will change your mind if you're not. Um, but if you're looking for something and you have no clue on where to go to, to this is a good book to get it. Um, if you don't want to hunt around the internet for probably other uh, resources, it probably would be free. But this is a good uh, book that compiles everything. Um, Beyond that, um, I, my recommendation though would be to buy the PDF. The PDF uh, is only fifteen dollars. It's on Drive Through RPG. I don't know if Modifius uh, uh, sells the PDF directly, but on Drive Through RPG, it's only fifteen dollars, and that really makes the price for what you get a lot better, in my opinion. Especially considering you would be able to, um, unless there's some sort of uh, restriction on. Uh, protection for copyright I don't think there is but you would be able to print these tables out not to give to your friends but if you want to have a paper there uh, to you know have the tables that you want maybe on your or on your own GM screen or even you could use some of the stuff even not as a solo GM right if you have a GM screen and you're running a game of D&D &D and you are stuck on ideas on what's going to happen next uh, some of this information could be not taped, maybe like hooked up somehow to the GM screen for a quick reference uh, to help you keep the game running. So that's the advantage of the PDF besides being cheaper and something like this is the ability to uh, take that information and just print it off and have what you want where you want it. Um, overall, if I was to uh, give this a rating, I'd probably give it around a 8.5 mainly because it's it's a good book with a lot of good information um, but it does like I said the price kind of brings it down um, the PDF I, I think is the way to go with this I wish there was a little bit more meat to it but overall the stuff that's here here is so good that if you are going to do solo GMing you should probably consider uh, paying for this at least the PDF of it so yeah I really enjoyed my time with it it was really just a matter of uh, the, the value per cost um, and I think that would have been better served uh, again the cheaper PDF and uh, just you know letting the book that for me ended up being over $40 uh, not not really getting the uh, the book I don't even know if it's softback or hardback at this point because I haven't got it yet but I hope this helps you out I hope this kind of gave you some information on this and let you decide if this is for you um, if you have any questions put them in the comments let me know and thank you so much for listening alright you have a good day